All right, so this video, I'm gonna discuss um, my thoughts on the cheating potential for per, in the current CSGO pro scene, specifically at offline events. I get asked the question, do I think there are pros cheating um, in the scene today at the at these these offline events? And my answer is, I have no idea if they are or not, but I 100% believe that they could be. And I'm gonna go over a couple things that get discussed frequently um, as potential methods or techniques that could be used to prevent it. I'll outline a little bit of the issues with some of those solutions and uh, discuss generally how the events operate. It's important that you understand my background outside of the game has, has been for a very long time, the technology space. I've worked with a lot of companies, a lot in the security space. I've got a very strong understanding of computer science. I am not a programmer but I understand all the concepts and the techniques um, that can be used and leveraged to allow a player to cheat in these type of events. <clears throat> so with that said, um, I'm gonna set up a little bit of, to give you an understanding how these events operate, and then we're gonna go through a couple things that I think are really important to address um, as part of a, a strategy where you're putting up it's in the security space, it's called defense in depth. And it essentially means you're putting up as many obstacles as you possibly can to the person who's attempting to cheat. And the idea being that maybe their, their software is so good that it can get past the first eight obstacles, but it can't get past the last two, then you're successful in preventing that person from cheating. So a lot of the things I'm going to talk about, it's going to sound like I'm dumping on them because they're not as effective as people think they are, but they should still be used. And I think it's important that, that people understand that when watching this video. So when you go to these events, uh, I think all of them nowadays are using solid state drives. You're given a practice computer where you can warm up, practice, deathmatch, that kind of thing. And on that computer is where you set up your solid state drives. The solid state drive has a base Windows image on it. You connect, it gets plugged into your computer generally by the admin. And then from there you set your config, set your resolution, all those kind of things. Install any drivers that you need for your hardware get all your stuff set up, tested, make sure everything works. And then that solid state drive is what they take out of the practice computer and bring to the match computer when it's time to play your matches. It's important to understand this process because generally you do not have internet access on the match computer. A lot of times you do on the practice computer. In a lot of situations that internet access gets restricted, but that doesn't always solve the, the issues that internet access can, can create. If you think back to the Kaylee situation and, and how that whole thing happened and got detected, um, and his, there's been other examples of this occurring, th some of the cheats were being passed through Steam's workshop and, on, and maps that you could download from the Steam workshop. So even if internet access was restricted to only Steam and Valve functions, people could still get their cheats. And this is why having any internet access is really, really risky. The other thing is some software, specifically the Razer Synapse driver suite, requires internet access to log in. So even if you don't have internet access, it almost always gets provided to one or two people on a team that require that for their driver software to be installed. Now during this process, there's usually one admin, one per team. Very unlikely that that one admin can spectate all five players at the same time from behind the players where the players can, you know, like move up close to their monitor and their, their chairs are going to block a lot of that the, the viewpoint that an admin would have, the admin could get distracted in talking to a coach or a player or, you know, a peer if there's one in the room. Just not as much observation and scrutiny on this, this process as there, there could and should be. So that's the first thing. Um, internet access shouldn't, shouldn't be provided, and it's difficult to make these events happen without it, but it's something that needs to be explored as far as, pos as far as it possibly can to the point of not providing any internet access for the entire event. Very difficult to do because you need it to log in, you need it for authentication and those kinds of things. Um, but it's something that should be pushed as far as possible. The next, co next point that comes up an awful lot is um, the restriction for USB storage devices. And I saw tweets about this today. This is something that should be done, but it's very easy to bypass. And so what this, what this restriction is, is usually it's implemented via Windows security policy that says if somebody plugs in a USB storage device, do not allow them access to it. So Windows will prevent that from happening. So you can't walk up with a thumb drive, plug it into the computer, open up your configs, download your configs, your maps, and then if you're malicious, you're cheating software. 
That's the intent of this policy. The problem with this policy, or this as a solution, is that there are devices that have been on the market for years that hackers outside of gaming have used that when you plug them in via USB, they mask themselves as keyboards. And the reason they do this is that when you, if you think about what happens when you plug a keyboard into your computer, Windows instantly recognizes it and allows you to type on it. And there's one product in particular that I won't name that allows you to plug, it, plug in a USB device. Again, it masks itself as a keyboard and it allows you a scripting platform that you can then execute software from. So if anyone tells you like, oh, you can't, you couldn't inject sheets via USB because we, we block storage devices, they're wrong. Um, they've been wrong for a very long time. And again, it's still something that should be used, but it's something that can be bypassed. And people need to be aware that that's something that can be bypassed. Um, the next point, um, something that comes up a fair, a fair amount is the use of anti-cheat clients at LAN events, not always being done. Some events use um so for example mlg uses sevo client for a lot of their events that is an anti-cheat client it is running on the machine the entire time that you're playing that's an example of where it is being used a lot of instances where it's not being used if someone's using a different platform if they're just saying join this local area network server and connect that way not always being used um, and i should also say that in some instances the solid state drives that you're that you have for the duration of the event those images get, get saved and then they can be reviewed later. So I don't think there's been an example yet where a player has been banned after the event because software was found on that solid state drive, but events are starting to store those images to, to review more thoroughly later. Most of the advanced cheats are probably going to eject themselves at the end of your, you know, if you close the game or what, whatever the process looks like. Um, but it's something also should be used in those clients, especially if there's, if there's one player with a ton of suspicious clips, that solid state drive should be interrogated pretty heavily during the event, but then also after the event. Um, cameras is something that gets discussed a lot where you would mount, mount a camera. So you'd have maybe a camera that's like on my side here so I can see my monitor in the front. can also see my mouse hand here on the side. It's a really good idea because what you can do is you can use, use the camera to see, hey, this player has one sensitivity and he just made a, an in-game flick that was you know this distance, but his mouse moved that much. There's a disparity there. It's very suspicious. The problem is, do you ban somebody off of that? Let's say they have five of those in a game and they hit some incredible shots, but you're, there's no software detection. So you, you would then have what people in the scene hate, a manual ban. Don't know if players would be comfortable with it. Don't know if organizers would be comfortable with it. And if the software is good enough and it's not detected, do you still ban somebody because you have that extra evidence? It's a very, very muddy, muddy, uh, muddy waters there but something again i think should be used i think the camera should be there it seems affordable enough for that to be implemented another point that gets discussed um, and actually in thorn's video he mentioned the use of key loggers i think another idea that can be can be explored and may be implemented problems with it are generally going to be around privacy don't know if players are going to want to log in with their passwords so it's something you'd have to excuse me have to consider um, and then the other thing is if the software the cheat itself is running at a, a level that's, you hear it a lot, ring zero, a kernel level, um, is running at a higher level than the key logger, there's a chance it'll just bypass that software. So if I the example I would give there is if a piece of software can bypass the ESEA client, which is the best anti-cheat client today, it's probably going to be able to bypass a basic key logger. Um, another idea that gets discussed, send new hardware, right? If we know player X is a suspicious person, and they use whatever mouse, whatever keyboard, let's go to the manufacturer of the, that mouse and keyboard and send them brand new ones to the event, and that's what the player has to use. Problem with that is, one, some players aren't going to allow that because they like how broken in their mouse is or their keyboard or whatever. Two, some players use old mice, old hardware that you can't get anymore. And three, some players use custom, in some cases, um, one-of-a-kind pieces of hardware. So the example I'd give in the current scene is Coldzera has a very custom made mouse that I can't go online and buy. So in order for that manufacturer to ship that mouse, a brand new one, they might have to create another one of those mice specifically for that player. So it just makes it a little bit, a little bit more difficult for that to happen. Now, each of those, as I mentioned, that there's a way to get past them. Um, people say like, well, you know, if somebody's cheating at LAN, you can, you can tell, you can see it. There was a cheat that was that came out a long time ago, um, which would beep when you moused over a player through a wall. That's something you won't see in clips 
because it's just not something that's visible, something that's audible. Admins would have literally no idea that that occurred because they can't hear what the player is hearing. And it would allow the player a huge advantage over the competition because if he's holding an angle, he can stare into a wall like he's dodging a flashbang. And if he hears a beep, he knows there's an enemy coming. Um, so anyone that tells you that it's not possible to cheat on LAN is wrong. It is absolutely possible that someone could be cheating at LAN today. I don't know if they are, but it's possible that they could be. And then I think lastly, um, on the same conversation of sending new hardware, the intent, and I, I didn't go over it and I probably should have, the intent of sending new hardware is to eliminate the potential that a player has in the hardware they have embedded whatever technology necessary to inject their cheat. So, for example, it would basically be like if I took my mouse and I opened it up and I put in this the device that masks itself like it's a keyboard to execute commands and then closed up my mouse. When I plug my mouse in, it's completely innocent looking. I plugged in my mouse, I plug in my hardware, everything's great, except from my mouse, software is then injected and now I have an advantage and I can cheat um, on LAN with no one knowing. And that's what sending new hardware would help bypass. There are people that don't think, I saw some tweets today where someone said, um, that it's like extremely difficult or can be easily prevented. It's, it's not that easy. You know, you can store, I think, maybe half a terabyte of data on a, on a piece of uh, hardware that's like the size of your thumbnail. It's not something that's super easy. And I don't think a lot of events are sitting there in the period between when the players get there, set up, and when they play that are actually like opening up keyboards and mice to explore and see if, they're, you know, if the hardware is modified in any way. So it's definitely something that's not difficult to do. It's definitely something that's doable and been done before. Um, and anyone that tells you otherwise is just wrong. And I think I think that's it. Now, I, I don't know if there, again, I would love, I hope this conversation continues. I imagine this will probably end up on Reddit. It'll definitely be on YouTube here shortly. It's a conversation I think that needs to continue. Um, I do watch a lot of these clips. I think that they're important that people don't turn a blind eye to because we all want a game that's clean and pure um, where skill is being used to win matches, not software. And I think it's important that people um, are aware that this is a possible thing that can occur. Don't know if it is occurring, and I think that uh, that's a different conversation in and of itself, just not one that I, I'm prepared to have because I, I think that without having more um, evidence and the ability to interrogate certain pieces of hardware that players are using and stuff, you, you really can't, uh, you can't determine that. And unfortunately, I think when you, when you have cheaters, <clears throat> the way I look at it, so well, the way a lot of the cheats work is they're, they're very similar to malware and that they are constantly evolving. They change, they, they morph after installation. So it makes it that much more difficult to, to detect. And the battle between cheat and anti-cheat <clears throat> excuse me, is always going to be one guy building a wall and the other guy building a bigger ladder. It's just the nature of the game. I don't think Valve has done a very good job. I think they've been better recently with Valve Anti-Cheat, but we've seen before where Valve's own s systems were being leveraged to distribute cheats and they weren't detected by Valve themselves. <clears throat> so when you have something like a potential camera solution that can detect or can catch very suspicious things and provide more evidence you'd have to have a very difficult conversation of do you feel comfortable having a manual ban? And I think for a lot of people that they're just not comfortable with that and understandably so. So all of that said, um, I think it's something people need, need to be aware of. I think it's, it's a reality and, and Thorn did a really good job of covering it in his video where people are like, no, they wouldn't cheat. They wouldn't, you know, risk their careers or risk whatever. Um, I think people who say that just have a complete lack of understanding of humanity and the world that we live in. Cheating in sports has been something that has occurred, I think, in every major sport for all of history. Um, it's not something that's going to stop. So until a game like CSGO can be completely operated from server side where there's there's no ability for the clients themselves to modify or change anything, um, we're going to continue to have this conversation and issues like this. Um, I think every method possible should be used to prevent this. I'm a big fan of a defense and death strategy when it comes to security in general, but specifically to cheating in esports and in a game like CSGO. And hopefully having a little bit more awareness, a little bit more information, maybe helps somebody come up with a great idea. Definitely a market for a, a solution that can help solve this problem. And um, love to continue this conversation and appreciate you guys watching.